I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to demonstrate how to make an applique block called Sunbonnet Sue and Overall Bill. These are very classic patterns in the quilt world. You can get books on these two little adorable characters showing them doing all kinds of activities and you can even get free patterns on the internet. So this is the most classic of all of them and I'm going to show you step by step how to make your pattern and get it all cut out and applied to your fabric. So let's get started. So let me go over how you can get your own patterns for free. Okay, what you're going to do is log on to the internet. Okay, once you get on the internet, you're going to scroll, you're going to go to the little search block and you're going to enter either Sunbonnet Sue Quilt Block and or you want to do Overall Bill Quilt Block. Then you're going to scroll down uh, past the first few websites that show up and look for something that says images of Sunbonnet Sue or if you're looking for Bill it'll say images of overall Bill and once you click on that dozens of images of Sue and Bill and different craft projects that you can use them on. So let me show you some of the ones that I found. Okay, here is Sunbonnet Sue holding a little doll of Sunbonnet Sue. That's, that one was really cute. And then if you like to do embroidery, you can get images of Sunbonnet Sue in embroidery patterns. This one is absolutely adorable. She's all in red and holding a little heart. Just a really cute pattern. And then this one is also very elegant little pattern. She's holding a balloon. These are so easy to do and in a second I'm going to show you how to do them. Now let's look at what you can find on Bill. Okay, like I said, you're going to see them doing all kinds of activities. Bill has just gone fishing and he's on his way home. Here is a very classic overall Bill pattern. This is so, so cute. And then here's another one of Bill who's been going fishing. Now sometimes when you click on the images, they come out a little small. So when you decide to print one out, and if it's little like this, you can enlarge it. Select, so select your enlargement button on your printer and increase the size. Now here is an idea for a quilt that you can make. And each one of these overall bill patterns, you can use up different scraps. So each one was a little different as far as fabric selection. Now this one is really great. And it, what it has, it, it already has the little pieces separated for you so that all you need to do is cut out your fabrics for it. And up here, this little tiny picture, is an image of how the layout is now. You sh probably should enlarge this one because this one's pretty small. So now let me show you the one I'm using, okay? I liked this one a lot. This is the one where he's probably already gone fishing. Now the part of this that I'm not going to do in this particular demonstration is the pole and the fish. But if you want to do the pole, you could do a little satin stitch out here and then a little straight stitch going down there to the fish if you wanted to do this one. Okay, so let me show you what I did with this. You want to cut out the pieces. All right. Now on this particular pattern that I'm using, I actually had to make two copies of this because I needed to cut out the arm and the hand separately. And then here's the overall, the pants down here, the trousers. So you can see why I had to make two copies 
to get that out. So once you've cut out all of your pieces, then you want to transfer it to cardstock because it's easier to trace around this, especially if you're going to do multiple uh, squares with overall bill or sue in it. So just use thin cardboard. You can either buy it in stores or just scrounge up some old cardboard from around your house, okay? Now, once you've got all of that done, then get your two-sided iron-on fusible web, okay? Now, what it has is on the back is this plain paper. Nothing is on it, but on the front, you'll see little blue lines or you might have some that have yellow lines. Now these comes in sheets of 9 by 12. I think there's about five in a package. You can get them at fabric stores, craft stores, and you can even purchase it online. So once you've got your templates made, then you want to lay the templates on the grid line side of your fusible web and then just lay it down and go ahead and trace around it. So do that with all of your pieces. After you've got them done, you're going to cut them out of your sheet. But when you're cutting them out, you want to leave a little bit of space here. Don't cut on the lines just yet. Okay. Now you're going to remove the paper off of the back and let me look for my glasses here because I can't see very well. There we go. You're going to remove this paper off. So just lift up the paper on the back. Now if you're having a hard time getting this paper off, just take a straight pin and score it. You're tearing the paper, then bend it until an edge pops up. So as you're lifting this off, make sure that the glue is still on the grid line side. Don't lift off the glue just yet. So remove all of this. Then once you've got that removed, place it on the back side of your fabric. On the back side. Otherwise, it's not going to come out right, okay? So once you've got it on there, finger press it down real good, okay? And then Use small scissors. You're going to get better results cutting these out. Now you're going to cut right on the drawn lines. Okay? So do this with all of your pieces of fabric, all your little applique pieces. Now when you're done with your templates, before I go on, put them in little bags like this. Okay? Because it's easy to lose these little pieces. In this way, you can use them on another project, the same pattern. So once you're done with your templates, store them. Okay, so now you've got all of your pieces cut out. Okay, so here's mine. Now I'm going to take the hand and arm away for a second. Okay, setting it right there for now. Now you want to just lay these down and arrange them. I've still got the paper on the back. Okay, so lay them down and see how you want them to be arranged. Get them all kind of where you want them to be. Then start up here. Now you're going to remove the paper. So pull this paper off. Now if you're having a hard time getting the paper to come off, don't forget to score it. Tear the paper a little bit. Now you want to be real careful that you don't lift the, oh, let me get it here. There we go. Whoops, I tore it. There we go. You want to make sure you don't lift the glue off. Okay? You want the glue onto the fabric. Then remove the paper. Then set it back down where you wanted it. Okay? Now don't finger press it just yet. Just sort of tap it just so it doesn't fly away somewhere. Then take off the next piece. Remove the paper on the back. Place it down. Don't finger press yet. And then do this one and then this one. Now, if it looks crooked and you don't like 
the way it is, you can still lift it up and shift it around. Once you've got it the way you like it, then finger press this all down. Then take the arm, place it where you'd like it to go, and then the hand, okay? Finger press it all down. Then once you've got all that done, then you're gonna go to your ironing board and you're use, gonna use a damp cloth. And I usually just take a spray bottle and I just spray it down, okay? So use a little spray bottle, it's real convenient. Then read the instructions on your package for how long to leave your iron on it. So it's probably gonna say 12 to 15 seconds. So hot iron with steam, hold it there for that number of seconds, and then lift it off. Now, if you find that it didn't stick very well, then just get your cloth damp again and then do the ironing process again, okay? Now we're gonna go over some of the stitches so we can see what options you have for that. Now on Bill, I've used the same color of thread as the fabric. Now you don't have to do that. You can pick one color and use it on all of your pieces. So you can really do whatever you want. Remember, in the quilting world, there are no rules. There's just merely suggestions. So have fun with it and experiment. Now, this is a very basic applique stitch that I've got on here. You'll see it's, it's quite common. Now you might want to use this stitch. So look at your machine. Then take some scrap fabrics and do some of the stitches to see how it looks and to see how wide they are because on some things you may not want them very wide. So I'm going to show you an example of that. Look at Sue's hat band. I started putting the same stitch that was over here on the hat band and I soon realized that it was going to cover the entire hat band by the time I got around it. So I switched to a small satin stitch so that the hat band would show. That's why it's so important to practice your stitches on the side. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you need to know more about machine applique, I have two really very detailed videos on the process. And it's called Machines Machine Applique Lesson one and two, and it's listed below your YouTube screen. And if you're interested in other applique tutorials that I have, also look below your YouTube screen for those video links. Now, make sure you follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell. I'm Cheryl and this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing.